Greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Joel Hitchcock and I want to teach you about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the speaking in other tongues. I'm going to share with you over the next few sessions how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive the accompanying gift of the speaking in other tongues. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is one of the most fascinating teachings in the Word of God. And so as we go into this, let us pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity we have to share your word with your people. I ask you in Jesus' name that my brother and my sister will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the accompanying gift of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit would give them utterance and that you will use them mightily in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. As I said, the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the accompanying speaking in other tongues is one of the most fascinating things in the entire Word of God. I want to read to you from the scripture from the book of Acts. Firstly, Acts 1 verse 8 says, You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power. Now, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, what did it look like? To do that, we have to go to chapter 2 and verse 1. And it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat and sat and one sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What a glorious, glorious thing this is. On the day of Pentecost, which by the way was a Jewish feast, the Feast of Pentecost, the word Pentecost means 50, so it was 50 days after the Passover. So 50 days afterwards, there was this another feast other than Passover, unleavened bread and so forth. And then they had the day of Pentecost. And on that day, they were in one accord in one place. And suddenly, the first thing I want to share with you is that they were focused on seeking the promise of the Father. And suddenly, it happened. And I want to start off by encouraging you in the name of Jesus to receive your experience with God suddenly. Don't be discouraged if you've sought it and you have not received it. Because I tell you, God is a God who will fulfill His promises. There's not a single promise that He has not fulfilled. There's not a single thing He said and He didn't do it. But God always fulfills His promises. And if He says that He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit according to His Word, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it happened suddenly. And, and it says there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. You see, the wind in the Greek is pneuma. So pneuma means wind or spirit. So there was a natural manifestation of wind and the sound thereof that was comparable to what was happening in the spirit. The natural was not as important as what happened in the spirit. And it also says they appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire. And that was another manifestation. The word fire there speaks of the blazing power of the Holy Spirit, the purifying power of the Holy Spirit. The purifying nature, you see fire purifies and fire is out of control. No man can, can, can tame it. And so God is saying that the Holy Spirit in your life will be untamable. Somebody say untamable. 
Let me be wildfire, Lord Jesus. I mean this. Let me be wildfire for you. And so God wants to bring his wind and his fire in your life. And it says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that does not mean they were not saved before. I'm going to get to this in a minute. But they were all already disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then subsequently to them being disciples of Christ, believers in Jesus Christ, they also received a secondary experience, which perhaps I should say was the same experience of salvation in the beginning, taken into a higher level. And when I say salvation, I'm not saying just salvation from sin. Salvation, the word salvation means to make whole. So God is in a lifetime process with us where He makes us whole. The word salvation means to make, to make whole. Uh, I believe the Greek word is sozo, to make whole. So, to, so God is making us whole that we may be fully like Jesus. And so then believing in Christ was just the first step. But then God continues throughout your lifetime and He never stops. And He makes us more like Christ. And this subsequent experience of the baptism in the Holy Spirit was that next step, a very powerful step, a very glorious step to becoming like Christ. It says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share with you here two things, uh, three things. And that is about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And just introductory remarks. And my time is almost up, so listen closely. Number one, tongues and the spirit baptism, I'll call, I'll call it the spirit baptism, not only baptism in the Holy Spirit, but spirit baptism. It's, it's a little bit more concise way of saying it. But God uses tongues and the spirit baptism, but it is not necessary for salvation. There have absolutely been some Pentecostal groups, of which I'm a Pentecostal, but I do not subscribe to what I'm about to tell you. And that means that you have to speak in tongues in order to be saved. In fact, there's not many of them left anymore that actually believe that. I, maybe there's more than I think. But one of the greatest proponents of that teaching has, has, um, has adjusted that teaching to be more biblical, that salvation comes through, through the cross, through Jesus Christ. And you, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is what saves you. Of course, that salvation should be followed up with water baptism and in, by immersion in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you have to continue to live the life that corresponds to your inner life. The outward life of works corresponds to your inner life of salvation. If I don't see the works in your life, I doubt if the inner work is truly done in your life. So that's not my message for today, but my message is that tongues and the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not necessary for um, salvation. Please remember that. But just because it's not necessary for salvation, meaning salvation from sin, it would still be necessary for salvation in this sense. Remember, if we consider that the word salvation means to make whole, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary to make you whole if our definition of salvation means that, to be made whole. You will not be whole without the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You will not be completely made whole if you negate tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and many other things of God. Secondly, Tongues and the spirit baptism does not make you an elite Christian. It doesn't make you superman. It doesn't make you superwoman. It doesn't make you super Christian. Tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not something that once you get it, you're better than the rest of them. No way, Jose. When you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it makes you a servant and it empowers you absolutely more than those that are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't say that arrogantly and I do not say that uh, in any way to negate the powerful ministries of those who God uses that are not baptized in the Holy Spirit or speak in tongues. However, 
when God baptizes you in the Holy Ghost and gives you the accompanying gift of speaking in other tongues, let me tell you, God will use you mightily. But He does not make you an elite Christian. That should not bring arrogance into your life. You and I should stay humble, say, Mighty Jesus, you use me for your glory. I'm your servant. I'm your handmaiden. And then my last uh, one over here that I want to share with you uh, before I give you a testimony and, and our time is up is that tongues and the baptism in the Spirit, the Spirit baptism, is not the ultimate end of the spiritual journey. And I'm really talking to us Pentecostals right now because there are some of us who think Bless God, and I speak in tongues, that's it. There's no more growing. Maybe we don't always say it, maybe we don't always even realize that we think that way. But the danger is that sometimes if we receive this glorious experience that we feel like we've accomplished something or we've arrived, and then we just sit back and stagnate, no, that is not how it's supposed to be. When God baptizes you in the Holy Spirit, and He gives you that accompanying manifestation of speaking in other tongues, which go hand in hand, as we will learn in the future sessions. And I'm going to touch on a lot of things, misconceptions. I'm going to answer as many questions like, were those tongues that people could understand? And you know, all kinds of things like that. I'm going to touch on a lot of that in our future sessions. But listen. When you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's not the end, it is the beginning, so to speak. God wants to use that power in your life to propel you to do all that He has called you to do. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is the unction to function. Somebody say it, the unction to function. God wants to give you the anointment to the appointment. God wants to put the anointing on you to accomplish the task that He has for you. Now, as I said, in closing, give your testimony. I don't have time to give my own testimony right now, but as, as, an, uh, as a testimony of somebody who really impacted my life, there are many that God has really impacted. I think of Reinhard Bonnke, I think of Nikki van der Westhuizen, uh, and many others, which I don't have to mention their names right now. God has really used them. But one of them is actually a, f a family member of mine, and he's my uncle, Uncle John, John Hitchcock. And Uncle John was mightily used by God. He's semi-retired now, over 50 years of ministry, pastored five churches in his life, was a traveling evangelist all his life, still lives in a traveling evangelistic bus to this day. Um, and, and, and God has used him in a mighty way, but it wasn't always like that. He had been a stutterer, severely bound by a speech impediment. And God used him. How and why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, because of the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and when he spoke in other tongues that set his tongue free to preach the gospel. A few years back I asked him, if I could, if you could just write his testimony, which is just about 10 paragraphs, um, which I'll probably put in my book. By the way, we have books. Go to joelhitchcock.blogspot.com and make sure that you order uh, the, the different books that I've written. And it's being updated as we speak. But uh, this is not in a book yet. But this is the first time that I'm actually sharing this, publishing it by, by video. Uncle John writes, Dr. John D. Hitchcock, At the age of three, I fell sick with meningitis. This left me with a stammering, stuttering tongue. I was raised Methodist and do acutely remember the fear I experienced during confirmation class. Upon commencement, the plus minus 20 children had to state their names in turn. Needless to say, the fear and nervousness blocked my word that I tried to utter. My name would not come out and I finally gave up. Every day experiences like this left me with a tremendous inferiority complex. It was, this was due to change radically. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Acts 1 verse 8. 
tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Luke 24, 29. Some weeks after my conversion, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper. It stated, inspired singing, inspired preaching. Next Sunday, I found this church. It happened to be a church of God, which was the full gospel church of God of South Africa. Uh, during service, someone in the pews began to loudly talk in tongues. I did not understand what was happening. However, Jesus said, my sheep hear or know my voice. No one had to tell me that this was of God. I just knew it and I knew that I had to have it. I was hungry for God and having found a church which was alive and on fire, I never returned to dead religion. So began a time of sacrificing my petty things in my life, two of which was rugby and smoking. All of my heart, with all of my heart, I began to seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I understood, according to many scriptures in the book of Acts, chiefly Acts 2 verse 1 through 4, that when one received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it would be accompanied by the miraculous sign of tongues and or prophecy. At this time, God had joined me to, with a number of friends, all of which were hungry for the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Our pastor had set Tuesday nights apart to pray for candidates who sought this experience. And so we came expectantly. That night, four of my friends received this wonderful experience. When it came my turn for prayer and hands were laid on me, I received, I experienced a liquid warmth deep on the inside of me. It welled up to my tongue and I knew I had to speak. Sadly, again for the fear of talking in front of people, invited, invaded my mind and I clamped up. Needless to say, I left church that night very disappointed. However, having always been a fighter, I set my mind to receive it the next week. The next Tuesday, when the pastor laid his hands on me, I did not feel the liquid heat and my faith was, but, but my faith was geared to accept. A loud gushing torrent of sound flowed from my mouth. And best of all, there was no stutter whatsoever. I was talking plainly. In conjunction with this miracle, I was instantly delivered from my inferiority complex. The lamb had turned into a lion. Not long after this, I began to conduct, began conducting street meetings. I began testifying on the streets and lo and behold, my, to my utter surprise, every time I shared my testimony or preached, I was totally fluent. There was no stammer. As I stated before, to this day, I will stutter in the natural. But every time I pray, talk in tongues, prophesy or preach, I am totally fluent. Not only fluent, but also eloquent. Truly, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. And therefore, Paul writes and states, when I am weak, then I am strong. So, this is, concludes our meeting for today. And I want to thank you for listening. And that website or blog, blog that my uncle has, John Hitchcock Ministries, dot blogspot.com will be a blessing to you make sure you look at mine joel hitchcock dot blogspot.com or joel hitchcock.com go straight there and make sure you look at the books and and um, follow our ministry but i thank you for listening to me today and i'm in our next session, I'm going to tell you more about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Stay with us during these meetings because you're going to learn so much and God's going to 
bring a fire in the inside of you. And I believe if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost before, He's going to increase that. He's going to renew that experience in your life. If you've never received it before, God is going to do it in your life and you will experience His power like you've never experienced it before. And I'll teach you about that. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear brother and my sister. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you touch them. I pray that your glory will fall upon them. I pray, Lord, that even this moment, the power of your Spirit will fall on them, even as it was in the book of Acts chapter 10. While Peter yet spake unto them, the Holy Ghost fell on them that were in the room. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name that you touch my friend right now. Where he or she is sitting I or standing, I pray for the glory of God to fall upon you right now. As I stretch forth my hand towards you, I declare the anointing, the power, the glory over you. And I fully expect you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the accompanying speaking in other tongues. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hi, this is Joel Hitchcock again, and I want to ask you to like this video, comment on the video if you will, any comments will be appreciated. Also subscribe to my channel, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Joel Hitchcock. Also go to my blog, www.joelhitchcock.blogspot.com or joelhitchcock.wordpress.com and follow my blog if you will. I'd greatly appreciate it. God bless you and looking forward to talk to you next time.